Hello, this is a virtual pathology specimen of a keloid in the skin. And just to orientate ourselves, we are looking at the cut surface. So this shows the cut surface of the keloid itself, and we will look at it in more detail very soon. At the deep edge, we have this yellowish subcutaneous tissue. Let me rotate this, and this is the side view. And here we can see on the opposite surface that the covering skin is shown. So usually the skin overlying a keloid is non-hair-bearing skin. We can see that the skin is intact with no ulceration. And on the cut surface, there is this almost uh, swirly, whitish appearance. And this is because a keloid is composed of very thick bundles of collagen. So this collagen imparts the whitish appearance grossly. Let's look at another example. Here are two further examples from our Virtual Pathology Museum. On the left, again, we can see the cut surface, and it looks very similar to the previous case with this whitish collagenous cut surface. And again, this is covered by intact, non-hair-bearing skin. This is another example on the right, and this is very closely related to the olecranon bursa in the elbow. Here is the skin overlying this keloid, which is in the form of a nodule. So similarly, again, we can see the whitish cut surface, the intact skin overlying this, and similarly, the skin and the cut surface. A keloid is essentially an abnormal reaction to injury by fibroblasts in the skin or in the dermis, and this gives rise to a very exaggerated scar causing a nodule. So clinically, the patient will notice a firm skin-covered lump at the site of previous injury, and this injury may be quite trivial, for example, an ear piercing. So a very common location is the earlobe, or perhaps over a previous surgical scar. Keloids recur frequently after excision, and these also tend to occur more frequently in Asians, Hispanic, and African populations. Grossly, we can see this firm, protruding exophytic nodule, and this is covered by skin, and the cut surface has this whitish fibrous appearance due to formation of thick bundles of collagen. So this translates microscopically to a lesion in the dermis, and we have these thick bundles of ropey collagen. And in between, we have spindle cells, which are fibroblasts or myofibroblasts. And often, this area of exaggerated scarring replaces any existing adnexal structures. We also have a talking slide of the video describing the microscopic features. And this is also found in our Virtual Pathology Museum. You may find all these virtual pathology specimens in PathWeb, our free online pathology resource. The link is in the video description. And here we are back to our Virtual Pathology Museum in PathWeb. So to summarize, this is an example of a keloid, and we are looking at the cut surface, showing this whitish fibrous appearance involving and expanding the dermis in a nodular fashion. The overlying skin is intact. Aside from being able to view our virtual pathology specimens as well as the annotations, if you scroll down, you will also see some additional information such as clinical vignettes, gross descriptions, annotated microscopy pictures, and also talking pots and talking slides. And you may register for free. The link is in the video description. Thank you.